Are you confused as to what role AppSlider can play in your marketing stack? Well, in this video, and actually in the next four videos, I wanna show you exactly how I help a client implement AppSlider alongside their existing stack of Mixpanel, Google Tag Manager, and a few other tools. In this first video, we need to start with the basics, which is the SDK implementation and what that looks like at a high level. Let's jump right in. Now, quick background of the client itself. I cannot reveal the name, but I can give you some rough attributes so you understand what they're working with. They're a fitness company. That is, they have a, a mobile app and people download the app and they follow workouts at home and there's videos and you can log workouts and save sets and reps and all kind of stuff. They have an iOS, Android app, and they have a web app. So we can say they're cross-platform. Historically, they have run paid acquisition campaigns mostly to web landing pages and a web checkout for them for users to start a trial and eventually become subscribers but now they're really interested in being able to run the same paid user acquisition campaigns but to the mobile apps themselves so that they're going to run facebook ads apple search ads tiktok ads or google ads and they want users to be able to click the ad get taken to the app if they already have it or the app store if they don't. And then be, of course, to track all of this and attribute conversions back to the ad platforms and for them to know what's going on. So AppSlyer is a natural fit here. It's a fantastic tool for mobile attribution and it can play quite nicely inside their stack. Before we can even jump into exactly how AppSlyer can help you and all the little details, we have to implement it. So let's jump to my screen here and look at the SDK implementation. Now AppSlyer has quite a few things. Generally, the closer you are to native apps, Android and iOS, the, the better or easier things will be based on my experience. But you do have a few things for Unity, Flutter, React Native. If you're using a framework that's not here, uh, for example, Expo or something, just double check the settings and play around. You, know, you may need to do a little bit more tweak to get it working. But if you look at the iOS SDK, you know, there's a lot of little details you have to get right with the AppSlider SDK. Luckily, there's several tools that can help you do this uh, to test your integration along the way. But I want to give you a, an overview of the highlights. We, of course, have to install the SDK. You know, you go through the process depending on what framework you're using. But if we jump to the int integrate SDK, a couple of things to know. First, it's really handy to be able to set a customer user ID. This is typically a user ID you control. It is persistent. Uh, you could use email, but it, not recommended. It has to be some kind of product backend database ID. So you can pass it to AppSire. AppSire will also generate an AppSire ID that you will need to collect, and I'll show you why in a second. AppSire will generate several events out of the box. Here's one example, right? The AF app open. Typically, any event that's prefixed with the AF is an AppSire event. The key event, of course, here is the install event, AF uh, underscore install. But you will have a few other things you can use. Now, since we're in iOS, you do have uh, things you have to do for iOS 14 and forward. Typically, you have to set up the, the prompt to ask users if you want to track them or not. That is, if you want to collect the IDFA. So you have to go through this entire steps to make sure that the ATDT is implemented uh, correctly. Users get the prompt. If they say yes, then you get the IDFA. If they say no, you don't get the IDFA. And lastly, we can look at some testing notes specifically. So you do have some testing you can do at the SDK level. Here's a couple of things, right? That you can run uh, in the console and get some answers back. The AppSlider interface itself also has some testing. Let me show you that quickly. If you open your AppSlider account and you go down here to settings, and then you scroll down to the SDK integration test, you have three tests you can run. The first one is to ensure that non-organic installs are coming in properly. Then you have a, a retargeting that looks at your uh, one links, and then live events, just makes the custom events that may be coming through. So generally, you know, there's a few steps to go through this. You have to add a test device. You can actually download an app on your iOS or Android device that can give you the uh, attributes needed. Typically, you need a device ID to be able to set up a test device. Once you have it, uh, then you can set up here. It'll give you a couple of links. It'll walk you through it. It's actually pretty straightforward. But I highly recommend you run this and you run those SDK integration tests at the SDK level just to make sure everything's working. Uh, it is common for to think that you have done the SDK properly, then you come here, you run this test, and it's actually not done correctly. So this is some of the things you have to double check before you can say we have fully implemented AppSire. Next, we have, of course, some conversion data. You can see that there, there's some logic here to be able to capture a lot of this conversion data and the attribution data. Again, this is the core thing you, you're trying to do. And you can see there's several notes here. So you generally want to go through all the tabs, make sure that you're actually doing this, or perhaps you're not. You know, you, perhaps you may, you may not want uninstall measurement, for example. You can skip that. but you're gonna go through most tabs to understand exactly what's going on and to ensure you have the right code. 
The other thing I want to mention here is actually the in-app events. So we know the App Store will give you some events out of the box, like the app open, the install, but you may want to pass your own custom events. Now, typically, you're not going to pass all the data that you may pass to like a mix panel or amplitude. Uh, tip, you know, in the example, in this case study, you know, we're passing the key conversion events, which in this case means when users actually start the checkout process on mobile, that is they open the, the, the dialogue to start a trial, when they enter the payment information, and when they start the trial itself, that is they confirm the in-app subscription. So those are three events, and those three events would then be used for ad platforms and a few other things. So there is some logic here to be able to pass events, you can have event properties, and we did see the third integration test that actually looks at in-app events in particular. As always, there is some special logic around revenue. So if you're, you're going to pass any kind of revenue event, for example, uh, not the start trial because there's no revenue there, but if you're passing kind of purchase or, or something similar, then you also want to double check this. And of course, there's some validation here for what the uh, revenue should look like. And you can see that there are some pre-built events that you can use, uh, and I do recommend you use them. This is actually quite similar to like Facebook ads or Google ads, so they have some pre-built conversions you can use, right? So there is a purchase event, there is a search event, there's a few other things. So if you have an event that kind of fits here, here's for example, the AFSR trial we were talking about earlier, we can pass it with this name, uh, and it just it just allows AppStar to kind of pick it up correctly, but you can pass an event with whatever name you want. Uh, it just is your choice depending on how you want to uh, structure it. Now, for the front end events, there's a couple of places you can see it. There's a summary in the dashboard, but I actually want to focus specifically on their analyze and then events. You'll see whatever uh, custom events you're passing. You can see here we're passing uh, three events, login, Facebook registration, and in-app purchase. Uh, and you can tell some basic numbers, you know, unique numbers, uh, total number of events here. Uh, the events are handy, again, because we are going to send them to add platforms as conversions, and it can help to me measure attribution downstream. So not just what ad platforms drove installs, but what ad platforms drove logins or purchases or something else. Now, this is all for the front end. Again, the SDK is the heart of getting an app store done correctly. Uh, there's some tricky things, but if you get it all right, it's a fantastic tool. There's one more way you can send data to apps higher, and that is actually from the server side. I want to show you that quickly because it is quite handy. In some Whether you're an app marketer or a product manager in a mobile world, one thing's clear, growth is in guesswork. To scale, you need reliable data. That's where AppSlyer comes in. It gives you a single source of truth to measure, analyze, and optimize every marketing touch point. So you know what's driving results and what's not. That's why the world's top brands trust it. No more guesswork, just smarter decisions. Book a demo now by scanning the QR code on screen or click the link in the description. That being said, Let's continue on with the rest of the video. So we can send data from what's basically a server to server. Uh, that is from a backend server to the AppSlider server. And that data, those events can also be used as part of the attribution uh, reported. Now in this case study, this is handy because again, you know, users are going to start a trial on the mobile app, the iOS and Android, but the subscription events actually happen on the backend itself. So we have some integration that we receive webhooks from both the Apple app, uh, app store and the Google play store. And then we take those conversion events and then we send them to a bunch of places like Mixpanel, Embrace, and so forth. So we have events like subscription started, subscription cancel, uh, subscription restarted when the user comes back, uh, maybe a subscription refund, and there's you know, a few other ones. Clearly, the, the most important one here is typically the subscription started, maybe the subscription cancel if you want to use those two. So we want to send this data to AppSire, but we have to send it from a backend to AppSire. So the logic is quite straightforward, right? You're, 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 you have some kind of backend data, you send it to AppSlyer, and then AppSlyer connects that to the front-end data that you collected. Now, there's a couple of things we want to uh, double check here because we have to send this payload correctly. So let me show you that. So when we send an event, you know, the most basic way we can do this is just a, a post call. Uh, so you can see, you know, here is the URL that we're going to post this data to. There's a couple of things to note, right? You need an app ID. This is typically the iOS or Google Play ID. Then there's a couple of headers that we want to keep in mind. You know, very standard things, you know, content type, JavaScript, JSON, that kind of stuff. And then in the body of the payload, we're going to include several things. Now, there, there's a lot of different properties we can include, and you recognize them right away. You know, we, get, we can include the IDFA, if it's a one or two, uh, the app's ID, the customer user ID, which we saw earlier. There's IP, there's the event name. Of course, we, you know, we're going to set some kind of event name here where there's some uh, default event that we saw earlier, like AF purchase, or perhaps we're going to come up with our own event name, like subscription started. And then the information about the app, currency, and a few other things. Now, there's a lot. Uh, you know, in, in this case study, we're actually not going to pass all of it. We're going to pass maybe just a handful of things, but we have to look at the ones that are required. Uh, and there's one in particular I want to highlight. 
So if we start from the very top, the AppSire ID is required. Now this is generated by AppSire at the SDK level, which means that you have to find a way to capture it at the iOS Android level, store it in your backend, and then make it part of the payload that you will send to AppSire. This might be the trickiest thing. It's not difficult, but it has to be done. Customer user ID, you're likely to have this uh, because you know, you're able to connect this in the backend. Event name, event value, straightforward, shouldn't be an issue. And now we actually also uh, look at some required fields around the OS. Uh, we're assessing here that you know we typically want to pass this. So again, something that you're probably going to collect at the uh, front end level, at the SDK level, and then store it in your backend. And that's mainly it. Those are sort of the key ones that we want to make sure we pass. Of course, if you want to pass more, you can pass more, right? If you're going to collect the AppSire ID, maybe collect the IDFA as you uh, at the same time. Uh, again, you know, only maybe 30% of your users are going to give you IDFA, maybe less. Uh, but if you have it, you can take it and whatever else you want to pass. So once you have it, you send this to AppSire and then AppSire, as long as it sees the AppSire ID and the customer user ID and a few other things, it will then connect it to the right profile, which has the attribution data, which tells them this user came from Facebook or Apple search ads or TikTok or something else. And that's all for this video. Now, in the next video of this series, we're actually going to dive a little bit deeper into dashboards and the privacy essentials alongside the attribution model and the partner integrations. Make sure to watch out for that video or you'll see a link right here that you can click into it and keep going on this case study journey as we get AppSire implemented, up and running, and we start using the data to make better marketing decisions. My name is Ruben Ugarte, and I'll see you in the next video.